Uh, welcome back, this is The Clay Golem. This is our Foundry VTT series, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the add-ons. And in this add-on, it is going to be the Carousel Combat Tracker. Uh, if you are familiar with Foundry, you may be aware of the Carousel, uh, sorry, of the, um, the, the previous one, the Combat Carousel. Uh, that is an outdated version. This is basically an updated replacement for it, but it does something very, very similar. So uh, let's start off by having a look at the uh, add-on itself. We'll go to Manage Modules. Uh, here it is, Carousel Combat Tracker. And we know that that's going to restart as we install this. So immediately, nothing. Okay, it doesn't show us anything. This is only going to happen when we enter into combat. So let's start by doing that immediately. I'm going to select my four characters, right click and put them into combat. And then look what happens at the top of the screen. Okay, so straight away, this is going into our combat and it's bringing up our tokens. So if I go to the classic version on the side here that we have looked at before, uh, it's basically replicating the functions of this. I just pulled that out so it's a bit easier to kind of see. Now, when we before, when we looked at combat, um, I suggested that what I would do is have this combat tracker popped out and then I've got also, we'll clean that actually while we're here. Um, we've also got our uh, text here, uh, our comments and things, so we can see what's going on, see our dice rolls, but we can manage our combat through the combat tracker pop out. We don't need to do that anymore uh, because the carousel will do a lot of that stuff for us. So let's have a quick look at some of the functions. Um, we have reset initiative, roll all, and roll for NPCs. So just like over in the combat tracker, we've got those buttons. We can roll on behalf of the whole party by clicking that button. There go the dice. It's going to update our chat log and it's going to put them into initiative order. Uh, yeah, if you might have spotted an error at the moment. Oh, it's not an error, actually. You might have spotted something that looks odd, but we'll cover that in just a second. Uh, so um, it automatically rolls their initiative. It puts them into initiative order. Sorryman is on the end, okay, um, even though he's got the highest initiative. This white line, if you can see that very fine here, uh, denotes the beginning of the next round or the end of the previous one. So actually, he's first in the next round, followed uh, by Haley and then Baldrick and then Nundro, okay, so he is first. Okay, a couple of other options down here. We've got previous turn and previous round. So if we accidentally skip somebody or they haven't finished, we can go back to their turn. All the way over on the right here, we've got this add event button if we want to do that. Our begin combat, our settings, and our next turn and next round. So basically all the things we've got over here that we might want, uh, but have a bit more flexibility. And because of that, I'm going to get rid of that combat tracker because we only need to look at the carousel combat tracker for this. So before we get into seeing how it works in a combat, let's have a look at some of the uh, settings here. So just clicking on this little cog, first thing it's going to bring up is this relatively small window, which is going to let us set some basic things. So what are the attribute values we want it to track? So I have gone default, which is probably quite useful, is their hit point value and then their armor class. And you can see these numbers just on Baldrick here, 20 out of 20 hit points and his AC below of 17. So that's what I've got set in mine um, and that gives me those numbers. I don't have to click on anything to see what their AC is. It's right there and I can keep an eye on hit points, which is lovely. Um, there's also a portrait bar that I could add on if I wanted to. So if I just save that, you can see we've now got this over here where Sorryman has taken a bit of damage. He's on 30 hit points and that's going to uh, start doing uh, that stuff. So I'm going to leave that on for this demonstration. Automatically bypass combatants marked as defeated. That's probably something you would normally have on. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. And we have these combat themes. So the default is none. But if we have Epic on, if you listen, it makes these kind of noises. So it will make some dramatic noises at the end of each turn, each round, etc. 
um, which is quite nice, adds a little bit of atmosphere. Uh, there is also the fight commentator, which is slightly different. Fight. You are next. It's your turn. So it's just that commentator voice basically reminding players it's now your turn, etc. Um, that's quite fun. I would not use that one personally, um, but I'm going to leave Epic on for this. Let's just save that. Okay, back to the settings, because what you will have noticed is there is a configure carousel option here. If I click on that, that is taking us to the same place as our, on the right hand side, our game settings, configure settings. That's the panel it's bringing up, but taking us directly to our carousel combat tracker. Uh, it's quite a few options in here, but most of them are purely visual rather than functional. So uh, tooltip attributes. What this means is if I hang over any of these character sheets, uh, sorry, these character icons, you get that little tooltip that pops out the bottom. Haley Long Breeze, it's got a level two cleric, variant human, it's got a hit points, at armor class, her move speed, and a spell DC. So this is about that drop down tooltip. I can configure that and say, what is it I want to show in there? So you can see it's got hit points, armor class, movement, a spell DC. But I can add more on if I want to. There's space for another three, but I can continue adding attributes and effectively add anything I want onto that that I feel is going to be useful to be able to reference quickly in my game. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm happy with those four. Um, I can always, if I, on special occasions, need to see something, just open the character sheet. Um, but those are the basic things that are handy to have right there. So I'll leave that as it is. The carousel size literally changes the size of this. Uh, because of my screen and because I'm doing it for the video, I've got mine set on the largest setting. So these are quite big. If I, uh, if I put that back to normal, just save changes, you'll see how small they go on my screen, which is a little bit ridiculously too small. Um, but if you're playing on a, a laptop or something like that with a much smaller screen, you might find that's uh, suitable for you. So like I said, these aren't changing the function, they really are only changing the visuals. Um, so the way the carousel behaves when there are too many combat, uh, combatants to fit on the screen. So if we've got, I mean my screen, again, it's quite wide. I need to change the size of that, that's better. <laughs> it's gonna bug me having them tiny. Um, so if I added another four characters on here, that's obviously going to get much longer. And then another four, they're going to start flowing off the edge of the screen. So this is just what does it do when that happens? Now I've currently got it, it will shrink the portrait. So each portrait will get smaller. Um, but I could say we hide them off the edge. So we won't be able to see them. But the carousel will move as it gets to each person's turn. So it won't skip them. Uh, it just won't, won't show them all on the screen at the same time or it can produce a little scroll bar for us so we can scroll up and down the list if we want to. Um, I'm going to leave minus the shrink portraits because I think that's absolutely fine and I'm not going to be doing right now combat with lots of creatures. Uh, the carousel style you can have it centered like mine is at the moment you can have it on the left or you can have no carousel. Um, which just changes again, just changes the position of this. Uh, just have a play, change those settings um, and, and see what you prefer. I quite like centered, I'm gonna leave it as that. Uh, this can be changed, so the direction can be horizontal, like it is at the moment, goes from left to right. I've got all my guys in a line across the top of my screen. If I do it vertical, it can, well, let's do it, let's do that one, just so you can see. If I do it vertical, it puts them in a line like this. Now, I don't probably want it vertical. The next one is the alignment. Uh, I don't want it vertical in the center, but I can put them in the left over here if I wanted to. So if that's how I prefer to have my layout, I can do that. Me, not so much. I'm gonna keep it horizontal and in the center, thank you. Put them back where they uh, belong, in inverted commas. Um, Portrait aspect ratio, so we can change whether we have these as squares. Um, there we go, boom, it squared them all up. Um, whether we want them as uh, portraits, etc. I quite like them as portrait, I'm gonna leave them as that. The roundness is literally to do with the shape of these uh, portraits. Sharp is just a square. Soft, it takes these bottom corners off of those icons to smooth them. Uh, I'll do 
that actually you can see that yep yeah, so it just rounds these off a little bit down there and then the next option which was actually um oops not that one uh, instead of soft round just does that more dramatically again these most of these options are purely aesthetic have them however you want i think i'm going to leave mine on soft uh, next we've got colors so the attribute colors um, so we can set those you'll notice that we've got um, we've got green orange and red there which correlates to the hit points is green the armor class is yellow there um, and you've got the portrait attribute color which is the red here that Soriman currently got on him. What you'll also notice, because Soriman is down four hit points, is his bar on the left isn't right up the very top. So that will start to go down as his hit point number goes down and the red goes up. So you might decide you want all of those on. You might decide that actually you don't need all of those. You might just have the numbers. You could just use the bar um, or you could, you know, whatever way you want to do it. Uh, we can set where those bars are, so that bar is currently on the left, I could put it on the right, or twinned. So I've only got um, the, the one bar showing for health here, um, but if you had multiple bars up you could twin them, so it's next to it. Uh, again, attribute visibility, do I want the text and the bars? So if I go text only and save that, that bar's disappeared. I've only got this text wording here. So you might decide that you want the bars only. There's no words, just the bar to keep an eye on. Again, it's just the visuals. That's all these options are changing, really. Just uh, I'm going to put mine back to both. OK, so yeah, change it however you want. Uh, show descriptions. So show the active effects descriptions in the tooltip for the owner observer or everyone. So if I hover over this and it pops down, it will also show, let's do something nasty to Haley. Um, oops, don't want to do that. Let's uh, close that a second. If I go to Haley's character and I say that she is uh, concentrating, we add concentrating, you can see that on the top right of her card, we've got her little symbol saying she's concentrating. And also here on the tooltip, it says that it's concentrating. So that's all that's referring to is do we want to show that on there as well? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, hide defeated again is on here. Show disposition color. Um, show initiative on portrait. So we have got that. We've got our numbers showing up there for us. Uh, and this, you know, showing the display name. Uh, and all of those bits. So this is all just about how you want to do it. Now, what you will notice here, there are things like you can hide until first turn. So if you're rolling a whole bunch of monsters, but you do not want the players to know what that monster is, you can hide them until they get to their first turn, which is where they come out of cover or whatever it might do. Again, it's about your preference as a DM, how you would like to run that. Um, and as you can see, you can do things like change the images for the borders, the backgrounds for the portraits uh, and things like that if you want to. Um, and, you know, the systems icons, tooltips, etc. So most of it's just aesthetics. OK, so it doesn't change the function, only what you can see. Oh, no. Oh, look, I'm got my I'm going to put my numbers back on. Uh, duh, 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 which one was that? Uh, I've got bars only. I forgot to change. I forgot to save it when I put it back to there. OK, so before I jump in and start, I'm going to stop, stop concentrating, Haley. Take a rest, mate. So before I jump in and run a quick little combat just to show you how that works, um, what's really handy thing to do at this point is to look at some of my characters opening Haley uh, and going, well, what are the things she's likely to use within normal combat? Um, so she is likely to use her that is sorry that is going to provide a status effect that we were looking at. So something from D Freds that she's likely to use. So is she likely to class bless? Yes, she is. So I'm going to take bless and I'm going to drop it down in this toolbar down here. This is my shortcut. Okay, so that convenient effect is in there. So if I you uh, see Haley's icon here when I click this it will apply bless and that's showing in her effects and I can click it again to take it off 
So I don't need to open dthreads convenient effects to get it. I can just drop it on the toolbar. So what would be really helpful is for me to do that with the common effects that she is going to place on other people. Um, so she's commonly going to use Shield of Faith. So I'm going to drop that down here. Okay, and you can see that it says it's the toggle convenient effect for Shield of Faith. She's commonly going to think about using Bless. Um, is there anything else she's going to use likely? Um, and of course you will know or you'll get to know with your players what things they tend to use regularly. Um, Baldrick's not going to use anything special. Um, Sorryman will. If I open up Sorryman, um, he's a barbarian. Oh, he's not a barbarian, he's a magic, he's a wizard, but he's actually a barbarian. So he's going to access his rage um, fairly frequently and obviously that's a sustained, sustained effect. So if I uh, put this rage into here and get out of it, I could drag that down and stick this down as bars. So now it's really easy during combat to actually just apply these with one click of a button and with that times up it will automatically take it off the character when they've done. So all I need to apply, but I haven't got to worry about going into convenient effects and searching it. I can do that ahead of time and this bar will save. So I will get used to the common things my characters are doing and the common effects I want access to. Now if you're not aware, this bar here that has up to 10 um, different things, these arrows on the end, um, you can click these, there's actually five different toolbars there. So you might use five different toolbars, I don't know, one for each character and a monster one, if you've got lots of effects happening from characters. Um, but you might use one for these effects and then others for um, for tokens you want to put out, etc. It's totally up to you, but it does make life a bit quicker. All right, so let's uh, let's get into a bit of combat then. Uh, they've got their initiative, so now I'm going to click my begin. And there's that dramatic uh, sound effect that comes with that that we selected. Uh, I'm going to bring up my chat messages. Let me just clear my chat messages again so that we're not confused by other stuff that was on there. And as you can see, um, Sorryman was highest and you can see his card is a bit bigger than everybody else's to show that it's actually his turn. Again, that white line, which is the end or beginning of each round. One of the options I had was mine was centered, which means it keeps the active character in the middle of the carousel rather than at the beginning of the list. Um, so it's Sorryman's go now uh, and he's going to choose what he's going to do. Now for this combat I'm just going to say they are going to choose to target each other and they will pick on whoever has the highest hit points at that time. So Sorryman is not going to attack himself but he will attack Baldrick who has 20 hit points. That's the next highest. So first thing we're going to do with Sorryman as I open his character sheet he's going to do an attack with his quarter staff. So I'm just going to click straight on that. I could have that quarter staff attack down here. If I was the player, that's where I could dump that. As a DM, I don't want to be cluttered up with basic player actions. I've accidentally clicked it twice now. So Sorryman's going to make his attack, normal attack roll, and because he's targeted it, it's going to tell me here, I attack with my quarter staff, it's going to include my bonuses. Did it hit Baldrick? He's got an arm class of 17. No, it didn't. Uh, I'm going to keep this really simple. We're not going to do movement and things. So that's the end of Sorryman's go. It's now Haley's go. So you saw the carousel shuffled along. Haley's now got the big portrait. It's her go. But actually, Sorryman is the one with the highest hit points. So she's going to attack that. Uh, attack him, rather. But uh, rather than doing that, the first thing she's going to do is target herself. Okay. Now, bear in mind, she's got an armor class of 18. She's going to ca cast Shield of Faith. There we go, it's applied. You saw it pop up here. It's put the icon just to the top left of her token. It's put a note in the screen and we saw here that that now says she's got an armor class of 20. So it has applied that effect. So that's d -threads doing that for us, which is great and it shows in the carousel. Fantastic. And I just used a shortcut from down there to do it. Really easy. Okay, so that's her main action. That's all she's going to do. Um, so I'm going to skip her rest of her turn. Uh, 
Okay, we're up with Baldrick. Now, he is going to fight the person who's got the highest hit points, which is Sorryman. So we're going to open this for him. Whoops, a daisy. Didn't mean to double click that. Um, he's going to do his halberd attack against Sorryman. It's going to be a normal roll. Again, it's going to tell us whether that will hit. It will hit. I can now do my damage. Brilliant. So nine points of damage to Sorryman. So I need to open Sorryman's character sheet uh, and I need to come in here and say, well, actually, you're now on 21 hit points. So we saw for Sorryman this red bar just suddenly jumped because he's taken more damage and this bar come down. So you probably wouldn't want both of those on, but I've got them on for um, just to show you how each one of those works. So this is very reminiscent of computer games that the red bar goes up the more damage you get. So some people like prefer that effect. Find whatever works for you. Um, now, I know Baldrick's just had his go, but he has Polar Master and he gets a secondary attack with the other. He gets to jab them with the other end. Uh, that also hits Sorryman, so he's going to do his damage. A whole seven points of damage, but that's pretty good. That's what I like about Polar Master. It might only be a D4, but you're adding all your strength and stuff behind that. So we've got another seven damage, mate. I'm sorry about that. So that's putting you down to uh, about... Blimey, brain doesn't work. Puts you down to 14. There we go. Of course. Of course it does. Do so, so he's quite badly damaged now. Uh, end of Baldrick's go. Right, now who has the highest uh, highest health is actually Baldrick. So we're going to be using Nundro, who's going to use his Warhammer and attack Baldrick. So again, we just do a straight attack here. Of course, I could be choosing... Um, Advantage and disadvantage, if that was applicable. Uh, but Nundro fails to hit, so we're going to move on from the go. We're back to Sorryman. Sorryman's been pretty badly battered now, so he is going to use his rage. Now, if we just check on Sorryman and we look at that rage, da -da 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 -da, there it is. So the description, it's a bonus action to do that, so he can do that whenever he, uh, at the beginning or the end of his turn. So he's going to make sure i've got him targeted i'm going to click rage he's now got rage tells me down here in the comment what his uh, in the chat that that's been applied i've got his little icon in the top left uh it's got an icon in the top right on his card up here uh, and now in theory he should get the bonuses that he wants so he needs to attack baldrick here so let's do uh let's do that open him up uh quarter staff Give him a smack. That's an attack roll. 13. That hits. Now, this is a versatile weapon. So if I just click the damage button, it's going to give the damage for the one-handed attack. Um, so with Nundro, he's using a Warhammer, but he's only using it one-handed because he also has a shield. Sorryman is using a staff, but he's using it with two hands. So I don't want to do that damage. I want to do the versatile damage for him which is the damage for the two-handed. Uh, so that's 12 points of damage to our poor fighter over here. So we can easily update. Whoop, yep. Wrong button. That was me misclicking, not my really terrible maths. Uh, there we go. So we've got another one damage. Fantastic. Well done, Sorryman. But he's now raging. Okay. Move on to Haley's turn. Now, one of the things that Haley likes to do and I'm going to pick on Sorryman, even though he's not the one with the lowest health, rather stop this getting too long. One of the things that Haley likes to do is she's got this Shield Master Shove ability. OK, so apart from the fact that she has, oops, so she has her Shield of Faith on to update that, um, she's got her Shield Master Shove. So that's what she's going to do as a bonus action. And that, if you're not aware of that one, what that means is she's going to use her shield to, to try and shove her opponent. Uh, and she can choose to knock them prone or to shove them away. And she tends to, her style is that she uses that to try and knock things prone and then beat the crap out of them when they're on the floor. That's, that's kind of her tactic to do that. So that requires a contested skill roll. Uh, and for that skill role, there's a reason I picked Sorryman, is a athletics check from Haley. That's a normal role for her. 
that's a 21 she's pretty tough and that's pretty hard to resist for a lot of uh, for a lot of people and that's contested against Soriman's either his athletics or acrobatics now for him it's the same he's raging though so if we check that rage thing I know this is a bit about the you know how the, how these things actually work oh we got it in over here anyway um, advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws he needs to make a strength uh, a strength skill check here to resist that he gets advantage so clicking that that I can now do advantage he needs to beat 21 he does so with that 19 so he does not get knocked prone so it's still Haley's go because that is her bonus action she now gets to just follow through with her normal mace attack which may or may not that's not going to do anything so let's just check them we move on from Haley's turn here Let's just check on this rage. Is this still burning bright? So it says 60 seconds here still. What about Haley's Shield of Faith? 594 seconds. So that is going down. That's what we want. Okay, so let's, uh, who, who's the next high? So Nundro's in line to get a kicking. So let's run through a couple of these quite quickly. So we're going to do attack there. Absolutely not, but he gets his bonus attack from his polearm master, which might. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Uh, Nundro's up right. Well, Nundro, his biggest opponent now, or the highest one, is Haley. So, he, uh, whoops, Nundro's go. There goes that Warhammer. Make that attack. Normal attack. 18. It does hit Haley only just <laughs> well you know because she has got that bonus to her armor class but you can see it's calculating in the combat it's adding that two on from her uh, shield of faith so that's working exactly how we'd want it to okay normal damage for him because he's using his warhammer one-handed as a total of 10 damage and we can apply that to Haley. that's uh ouch that's painful okay Again, with now a new round. So Haley's Shield of Faith has gone down. Uh, and we've now got Soriman's Rage going down as well. So this is all tracking exactly how we would want to do it. Um, we're able to add those effects. They are counting down. The carousel is making it nice and clear whose go it is. We've got some nice visual representation. I think it's a really nice little add-on. It doesn't mechanically change much. Um, but it just adds a real nice flavour to it. Uh, I'm just going to whiz through a few, things, a few rounds. What we should see, there it goes. We should see Soriman's Rage has just ended automatically because it got to the end of the time for it. Okay, so using the add-ons of time up, uh, sorry, times up, removes those things. Uh, we're using um, D threads to add those things and using the carousel combat tracker to make all of that visually more appealing. Um, there are other things you can do, of course. There's lots of different ways to do all of this stuff. I quite like this combination of these three to help manage those, but there, there definitely are other add-ons that we will look at that will automate some of these, especially like, you know, oh, you've done damage, we have to open the character sheet, we apply that damage. Um, you can tell your players to apply their own damage, of course you can, it makes it easier to, for the dm to admin but there are ways to automate it and we will look at those in another video um i hope this has been interesting let me know if you're planning to use it if you like it if you don't um if there's another option that you use instead of the carousel uh, yeah let us know it'd be great thanks for watching guys take care